Hello, I'm your host, Spencer David. This is the question of the future directions of Christianity and where does Christianity go from here? Recorded September 12th, 2021. This is the teacher channel. Do Christians have the correct facts for an accurate historical accounting of the 1890 story of Wounded Knee? Uh, this is a, just a quick warning. If you are politically correct and do not like language from a historical era that is politically incorrect, please skip this video. We will be reading quotes as they are from men such as General Nelson Miles, who presided over Wounded Knee. Just a few reasons why this presentation might help your research. There is a scarcity of complete, accurate, complete and accurate information available in 2021. This increases likelihoods that you will be misled right now. I will do my best just to give you some direct quotes and facts, historical facts with a few questions as well. Uh, you are encouraged to pray over the big picture of American history. It also helps us discover possible parallels to other times in history of our time. And finally, number three, consider and answer, un consider and answer the unanswered questions of the year 1890. Ponder the possible scriptural meaning for season and the emerging next paradigms, which will impact how we live our lives in society and religion. There's a quote I want to put out there. It is one of the most potent and important quotes in the entire New Testament, and that is Matthew 20, verse 16. This is the King James Version. We don't use the new versions on my channel. So the last shall be the first, and the first last. Those of you familiar with this quote also know the rest of it. There are many called, but few are chosen. A person has exhibited supernatural powers. He has shown himself that he showed the marks of spikes having been driven through his hands. He had offered to save the whites, and they had refused to accept him. And now the day of the Indians who are to be restored to ownership of the land had come. This is a paraphrase of the reports given to General Nelson Miles um, and disseminated from there. And this was from a newspaper article of the year 1890, from the year 1890. He also taught them to be honest, peaceful, cleanly, and to give up all bad habits. To say the least, it is a wonderful movement, and one is puzzled in the endeavor to account for it, the editor added. When the Sioux had spoken with him, he replied in the Sioux language, and so on, with the representatives of each nation. Now, Porcupine was an apostle of this new, relation, uh, new religion. Porcupine told him that there were several hundred Indians in Walker Lake at that time, including representatives of the Cheyenne, Sioux, Arapahoes, Gross Vengeous, Utes, Navajos, Bannocks, and other strange tribes. Some were white from a far distance that he did not know. We know uh, many of them from North America were here, but the description of this indicates they may have been from possibly even other continents. And how was the history recorded for Walker Lake? Again, Walker Lake is in the state of Nevada on the western edge. Well, accepted versions of history of this event are mostly based on the notes written in the Journal of General Nelson Miles, reflected in examples such as the following. Now, pay attention to how he describes the American Indian tribes. This last hope and belief of an unfortunate race was founded on the philosophy of the Christian religion. They had been told of the second coming of Christ, that the Messiah would return to his own people, the meek and lowly, the downtrodden and oppressed race, and not to the haughty and cruel. They had also been taught that the generations that had gone before would be restored to life, and strange as it may seem, 
an unknown and insignificant man living in the far distant country of Nevada assumed the character of the Redeemer, first proclaiming secretly to a few that he was the Messiah, returned to earth to bless his chosen people. The imposter sent one or two trusted emissaries to the far distant tribes east of the Rocky Mountains to tell some of the disaffected Indians in each tribe of the presence of the Messiah near Walker Lake in the sparsely settled state of Nevada. More from General Miles. They had also been taught that the generations that had gone before would be restored to life. And strange as it might seem, an unknown and insignificant man living in the far distant country of Nevada assumed the character of the Redeemer. Again, uh, very similar to the other accounts. First proclaiming secretly to a few that he was the Messiah, returned to earth to bless his chosen people. This created a ghost dance. As you know, the ghost dance was performed leading up to the massacre of Wounded Knee. There's been a lot of speculation and assumptions about the meaning of the ghost dance. According to those people that were killed at Wounded Knee, they were practicing their religion. Their Messiah had told them that that's the dance they should perform and in service to their Messiah, in service to Christ, they gave up their lives. That religion was outlawed by, outlawed by the U.S. government in 1890. Due to the persecution and banning of this religion in 1890, this religion then could only be practiced in secret. We, we talk about those facts surrounding Wounded Knee. It was a massacre that has not uh, been seriously de debated. The Messiah had promised them that the whites should be destroyed from off this land and the land would be given back to the Indians from whom the whites had so unfairly taken it and had broken so many treaties concerning payment for it. Now here's an apostle of the newly organized religion from Walker Lake. And I'm gonna just uh, come back to this quote, the last shall be the first and the first shall be the last. Now, um, this is the first known, I guess, record in a current history where the American Indians have received a new dispensation. Of, they have been given apostles and a, and a new structure had been set up. And this quote from the Bible, the last shall be the first and the first shall be the last. That, that can give you some perspective on why um, one part of the world gets it and then another part of the world gets it. Of course, uh, modern history has not looked into any real questions re revolving around uh, the many v visits of the Messiah to the inhabitants of the American continents for uh, even recent centuries. Um, Many Indian tribes have told of this. I'm going to talk about in another video, but it is in their history that they talk about this. There's a picture of Porcupine. There's Walker Lake. And I will be skipping through this. So if you need to hit your pause button, please do so to read attestations of Porcupine's character. Statements from General Miles predetermined there was nothing that was going to deter his bias. He believed that nothing he was hearing had any possibility of being true. Here's another one of his quotes. The exhorters, the so-called prophets, as well as the intriguing leaders were influencing the Indians in a religious belief and inspiring a hope in the hearts of a doomed race that some divine interposition was about to rescue them from their impending fate. Historians struggled to, to uh, pin the blame for this whole event um, at Walker Lake. Um, surely it was a hoax. General Miles certainly believed that. He spoke in derogatory words regarding those who were visiting Walker Lake and believed what they said, told him they saw the reports it was a completely Christian religion by all descriptions. 
And when this was all over, they were still trying to figure out who should be assigned the credit or blame. And they came up with this man, Jack Wilson. There's a picture of Jack Wilson. So we're going to compare the descriptions from Porcupine. There were others that described the Messiah similar to how Porcupine described the Messiah. So uh, here is the first one. The Messiah, he was not as dark as an Indian, nor as light as a white man, and his dress was partly like each. He was fair to look upon, that his face had no beard and was youthful, and that his bright hair extended to his waist. He was, now Porcupine, this is uh, he, was able to see the scars of the nails in the hands of the Indians Christ when he raised them. In his feet he could not see the marks of the nails by reason of the moccasins. But he was told they were there, and that in his side were spear marks which were concealed by the shirt he wore. Given this testimony, eyewitness testimony from Porcupine, the apostle of the new religion, uh, you know, for better terms, we call it, we refer to it as the ghost dance religion. But uh, apparently it was Christian-like in its uh, characteristics. Here's a picture of Jack Wilson. He's a fine looking gentleman. The question is, does he really fit any description Porcupine has given here? Um, I would say the, the strongest indication would be that he was, his skin shade would have been somewhere between an Indian and a white person. Of course, there's no indication of scars in Jack Wilson's hands in any photograph he was ever, um, in any picture he was ever photographed in. There's some more photographs, Jack Wilson. The shadow casts a little bit of a different light on that second picture. Those people at Wounded Knee that were massacred believe they were serving their Messiah. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 29 of the King James Version. Again, we do not use any modern translation of the Bible in any video that I use. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Therefore, if those... If those uh, Sioux Indians that were massacred in Wounded Knee were in fact serving their Messiah when they were killed, would this would not this uh, verse pertain to them that they will find their life? And uh, if that's eternal life, uh, another life, that's up to the reader to speculate and interpret. Of course, uh, there was a prediction coming out of all this that the season would come. And of course, when we think of seasons, we think of uh, about three months time. There were a lot of predictions that in the spring of 1891, the Indians would be restored to their land. That did not come to pass. That was not the case. And one thing that people didn't uh, asked the question about was uh, when we talk about a season, if the Messiah says a season, he's not referring to a season as we would three months and the weather changes. Um, in a scriptural sense, a season can be many decades. So just because it didn't happen immediately doesn't mean that it was proven false. And that's that's a point that's uh, missed by many people. A season could be many decades. It could be 130 years. Well, that's how long it's been, 131 years. Um, and in the, in the events of the world right now, we see, we see societies imploding on themselves. Would you have believed a few years back that um, this prophecy could come to pass? Of course not. As you see, our society collapsing, fighting itself. Can you see something like this happening in the future? Who knows how long into the future? Can you see this happening? 
And that's not for me to answer, that's for each of you to contemplate. So the followers of this religion may have believed their wrongs would be righted and corrected within a season, but there is a scriptural definition to this term that can extend many years. So to wrap this up, the year was 1890 and who was involved? Well, it was believers in this ghost dance religion as they called it. It was a religion that spread across all of the tribes. What happened? It led the ghost dance to be performed. That led to the massacre at Wounded Knee. These were Christians dying for their faith. What were the consequences? Well, that still hasn't been answered yet. Is there a just God? The answer is, if you have a relationship with your Savior, the answer is yes. Is it always immediate when consequences follow an injustice? And of course, the answer is sometimes not even in your lifetime. Were those injustices ever addressed? Right now, it doesn't appear they have been. Going forward, do you think that maybe there is some valid truth to this story? They believe their prayers would be answered. Their woes righted and their wrongs atoned for. They believe that their subjugation would be followed by liberty and that the limited power of their race was to be increased by the unnumbered host that was to appear. 